Hello and welcome to this tutorial on measurements for the GP2 Program Editor. This tutorial is from the series Introduction to the GP2 Program Editor. In this tutorial I'll be introducing you to measurements, how to create and edit them and how to use that in the simulator to test that they're working. OK, so here we have Delta Link 3.0 and as in the previous tutorial we're going to have to create a program um, to start. To do that we're going to click on File, New, Program and then down in this list we're going to choose GP2 Multifunction Program. Hit OK and your program is created. So, measurements define what the program measures. In other words, it defines the sensors which are connected to the logger's input channels, whether they need to be powered, and how to process or convert the electrical measurement into a result in scientific units. Measurements can be used in different ways. They can be recorded, used to control triggers, used to control relays, and can also be referenced in scripts. The measurement list contains all the measurements that are in the program along with their sensor type, channel and result units. To add sensors to the program you can click the click to add new item which will bring up a, a pop-up menu with all available sensors. We have uh, pre-populated this menu for you with uh, all of our line item sensors to make it easier for you to just choose one of our sensors. To explore the available sensors you simply hover over the various categories that are available and to get a brief description of the sensor itself hover over the hover over the sensor and you'll find a hint pop up. The categories that are available are divided into environmental categories which is the first section over here and then you'll see there's a built-in category which contains internal sensors within the logger itself. We'll touch on calculated category a bit later but um, you can also choose a generic sensor type which is an electrical measurement uh, which you can then freely customize the properties of. Okay so for the purposes of this tutorial let's assume we have a field of potatoes where we'd like to install a selection of sensors. We would like to measure the environmental conditions so wind uh, air temperature and solar radiation and of course we would also like to measure the soil moisture and let's say we'd like to also measure the salinity of the soil. So the process for adding these uh, measurements would simply be to click the add new row you'll get up your pop-up menu and uh, we'll start with the environmental sensors so we'll select a wind sensor and we're going to use the ANWD2 um, so as you can see here I'm going to select the complete row and the complete keyword indicates that this is an assembly of of measurements so you'll be inserting multiple measurements um, as the physical sensor that you have actually has multiple outputs. So we'll, we'll click on that. So the program automatically creates a default measurement name um, and also pre-selects the next available channel. This, uh, this is just to make things a lot easier for you um, and it will intelligently do that. Next we'd like to add air temperature so again we'll right click uh, go into the temperature category and we'll use a 10k thermistor. In addition to that we're going to want to measure solar radiation so for that we go into solar radiation and we're going to use an, an SPN1 in this case we're not going to use the assembly option which is the complete one over here but we're going to use SPN1 energy. So additionally we're going to add um, some soil moisture sensors and since this is a reasonably large field uh, we're going to add three SM150s. So there's the first one. Repeat the process for the second one. And the third one. And then finally we want that salinity sensor and we're going to use a wet a wet sensor for that. So now again we could um, add the complete wet assembly but uh, for the purposes of the tutorial I only want to add the one just to keep the clutter down. So we'll go to conductivity, a wet to poor conductivity. So there you go, in just about 15 clicks we've managed to populate our program with all our sensors that we'd like to actually have in the field. 
So again, I'd like to point out the uh, programming and installation nodes that are available for each of these sensors in the info panel. By clicking through your measurements, it will bring up a different one. Um, and this is particularly useful when we start looking at the properties of each sensor. If you scroll down and you go to the section measurement properties, it will list the relevant properties that are available for you to edit as well as a description to what kind of values you can put in there. So I recommend you go through those if you want to customize your sensors. So let's have a look at the properties of these measurements. If you have a look at the properties panel, you'll notice that the properties are all divided into four categories or subsections. General, which covers the, the measurements name, and uh, input, which covers all the input properties, calculation and result. Typically, if you're using delta T sensor types for your measurements, uh, the only properties you're generally going to change will be the measurement name, the channel, and then the sensor type specific properties that are available in the info panel. So let's uh, change some of these. Um, if we have a look on the left here, we'll see that theta, theta 1, uh, theta 2, and theta 3 um, are not consistently named. We'd like to change theta to uh, be called theta 1. So to do that, we select our measurement and on the right it's bring up, brought up the relevant properties. For measurement name we simply click in the editor and we add 1. There we go. Okay, so let's change um, the SPN1. We know that we want to m measure total radiation. So we'll change the name here to total. And um, let's say that the temperature sensor we know is not in channel 2, but in fact we've wired it into channel 4. So to change channel number, we simply select the channel property over here, click on the drop down list, and you'll see the uh, list of available channels. The application has automatically hidden channels that have already been selected, and this concept is used throughout the, the application or the program editor. When you're adding measurements using the pop up menu, you'll notice that some measurements or some sensor types rather disappear once you've started populating your program and that is because that though you can no longer add those sensor types because those channels that are required by them are no longer available. Let's get back to the channel here for the temperature sensor. We know it's on channel 4 so we simply change the channel over there and we also know this is an air temperature so let's uh, name it accordingly. For information on the other properties, um, the first thing to do is to click on the property and if you look at the bottom in the property hint panel um, it gives you a very brief sort of sound bite as to what that property is about. But if you need further information and you're not quite sure what to do with it, there's always the option of clicking F1 on the keyboard or pushing the help button once you've activated that specific property. Properties show that are shown in grey, like input type, are read only. This could be because they offer information only, um, but there are also properties like input type that are locked by the sensor type, and um, no other setting of that property is valid for that sensor type. A few advanced properties are also available, and you access them by right clicking the property panel and you select Show Advanced Properties, and you'll see the, the list has expanded slightly with simulation ID at the top and uh, you know, for, other, for other sensor types you'll get different properties that have been made visible. Okay so next what we'd like to do is actually program a logger with this and make sure that the program is in fact working and to do that we're going to use a simulator. Before we can do that though we need to check the program is validated correctly and since I know that changing the sensor or the measurement name is going to cause a validation error on our recording I'm quickly going to fix that but uh, this will be discussed more in the next tutorial. Okay, so to do that we're going to click on the main program window, we're going to click on connection details and then here we want to add a new connection, so we're going to click add. We want to add a GP2 simulator connection and we select simulator as the type of club we want to connect to click on the details tab and uh, we want to select the gp2 simulator click ok and you'll see it's now added a new entry in this list over here and then to connect that we're going to select it we're going to click ok and um, you can see that it's connected to the logger 
it's given some default vitals and I'll just bring into view here a little window it pops up to confirm the GP2 simulator is actually running. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the um, program we created and we want to now send that to the logger. So to do that we click on file, send to logger. And it's going to pop up a window. Sometimes it'll automatically connect to the one that you've connected in the main window. And sometimes it pops it up as well. So you select that, click OK and uh, you can see it's now programmed the logger. We're going to click on the census tab to confirm the program has actually gone in and you can see that it's now listed the measurements we've created in our program. If we click read now we can confirm that the values it's generating actually make sense for what we set up and in fact they, and in fact, they do seem pretty reasonable. So there you've programmed your first uh, program to a logger. So we cancel, we go back to the program. Now because we've sent it to the logger, we can actually edit the program within the logger directly um, in this main window and we just click on the program tab over here. Um, you'll see that it's now read only and that's because it's in the logger and we need to first tell if we want to actually change the program so we click on the change button. Right, so the next thing I want to tell you about in the uh, tutorial of calculated measurements. Calculated measurements provide you with opportunities to, to create calculated values so they're purely calculated values that you can base on an expression or formula and indeed other measurements or variables. In this tutorial, what I'm going to do is create a calculated measurement that averages our three SM150s. So to do that, we click on Add New Row. We go to Calculation down here and we click Average. As you can see, there are other, other ones you can use. Um, in particular, Custom Formula at the bottom pops up a window where you can actually create your own your own calculations or your own expression, your polynomial or whatever you might like to do. But I'm going to select average and uh, you'll see it's come up with validation errors here. So it's telling us we need to find result units and the measurements. So to do that we're going to click on the calculation category and in the result units we're going to type in percent because we know it's the same as our SM150s but we're going to add the suffix of average to separate it out in the charting. And then uh, we're going to select our three theta measurements as those are the ones we want to average. We click OK. So now to send that to the logger, we just have to hit apply now because we're again editing the program in the logger directly. Click apply, it's changed to read only to confirm it's been sent. Let's go to the sensor tab. And you see at the bottom of the list here that our new average measurement has been added. So if we click read now, the values, the other values all seem sensible and the average is 26. So you'll notice that um, the resolution is incorrect um, and it's, it's only giving us whole numbers. So we want to change that. So we click on cancel and you go back to the program. We want to change the program again. And then in the um, calculated measurement, which is already selected, there's a results category and you'll see there's a min max and a resolution. Um, these affect how the value is stored in the logger or in fact represented in something like a census window. So we know the minimum of this measurement is never going to be below zero, never going to be above 100%, and we want a resolution of 0 0.1, which is similar to the other ones. And while we're here, let's give it a more sensible name. Let's call it SM average of the SM150s. There we go. So again, let's click apply. Our program validation fails. Let's go have a look what that is. Yes, as I suspected, recordings. Uh, we've changed the name of the um, of the calculated measurements, so we just need to update our recording over here. So let's click apply. There we go, it's been sent. Click on the sense tab, click read now. And yes, there you go. So we've got a new name for our measurement, calculated measurement, and uh, the average value is now what we would expect based on the based on the three theta values. Okay, so that's concluded this tutorial. I've given you an overview of measurements and you've created your first program. I hope you found that informative and please uh, have a look at the following tutorials in the series to find out more about recordings, controls, alarms and scripts. Thank you for your time and please visit our website at www.deltat.co.uk.